Wish I could say I was finally over you But that's not the truth mm -mm. Everyone always keep falling in love again The fuck's wrong with them? I don't understand Maybe it will pass by someone save me For a pass out, I'm too lonely To be done on my drink at this page Welcome to day three of the beach vlogs. Um, it is currently Tuesday, which means it's Taco Tuesday, which means it's my night to cook. So, but welcome to the vlog. If this is your first video of the three part vlog series, um, I did vlog days one and two here at the beach at Top Sail, North Carolina. So I just uploaded that if you hadn't noticed in the first set of clips. Yeah, definitely go check out days one and two. I'll try to leave the link in the description and up in the cards and all that jazz. But I know last night I did not really give you much updates of Every Summer After by Carly Fortin uh, or Fortin, Fortin, Fortin. <laughs> I'm like the worst at pronouncing names. Like honestly, if it wasn't for the audiobook, I wouldn't even know how to pronounce the main character's name. Her name is Persephone. But to give you a description of what this one is about, it is about Persephone or Percy. And basically, it starts off with her getting a phone call from a childhood friend uh, for when she used to go to the lake growing up as a teenager. Um, it is her friend Charlie, and basically he's letting her know that um, his mother had passed away. And it kind of sends everything back into reality of like her thoughts of like what happened back then for the summer at the lake house. And with Charlie calling her, um, Charlie is actually the older brother of Sam, who was her like summer boyfriend at this lake house that she grew up in that her parents had. Sam and Charlie's mother has passed away due to cancer, which is unfortunate. And basically they're letting, he's letting her know like, hey, the funeral's coming up. So now we get flashbacks of when she was 13 to the first summer that she went to the lake house and met Sam and Charlie. And it's really cute because like obviously it's like a friends to lovers. It's definitely very similar to Love In Other Words by Christina Ward, which I love to give that one five stars. To be honest, I'm having, I was having a little bit of a hard time getting into it, but now I'm really enjoying it and very invested. I think and the weird thing is, like, I don't really like young adult, especially young adult romance, but I am really enjoying the past chapters than the present day chapters. But some news came to light in the present chapters to where I'm like, okay, now I'm more interested. So I am currently on, here I start chapter eight on page 109. Very much enjoying this one. The audiobook, I really like the narrator as well. I did get the audiobook from Libra FM, which is a better service than Audible. It actually supports your local bookstore. I actually went into the settings and I was able to select a local indie bookstore here in my hometown. Well, not here, but back in my hometown in Roanoke. So the proceeds will actually go to support them, which, you know, local small businesses need help like that so i'm glad that my subscription helps them so yeah if you are interested in libra fm definitely check out the link down below i think you get your first month free or it's like a free like 30-day trial run i also noticed that today is the publishing date for your invited um i 
did have this on my TBR last month. However, I never got around to it. But with it being publishing day, that means the audiobook should be available. So with such great luck, I was actually able to get the audiobook from my library. So I have this one. This is probably going to be my next pick after every summer after. So just to kind of give you an update on that. So the husbands went golfing again this morning, but I think this is their last round. They should be home around noonish or whatnot, but they were so sweet to set up the tents and everything. So I think we're going to go down to the beach probably within the next hour or so. I am still pretty burnt. <laughs> My leg, however, is feeling a lot better. Right now, it's just wherever my um, bathing suit straps were. So I think today is gonna be a strapless day. So actually, let's pick out my bathing suit. Okay, so here is the drawer of bathing suits. I think I only packed one bathing suit, which is just this simple black one piece. So probably wear that, but let's see what else we have. Oh, I lied. I do have this blue number with a strapless like bandeau tops so i could wear that that might be cool the only thing is i don't think i like the top on me but oh well i have the blue number but i'm pretty sure like i said i don't think i like this top on me i think it's actually a little bit too small and then i have this one which will probably be the most comfortable and probably the most flattering honestly so i may just go ahead and just pick this one yeah, I think I'm going to get dressed, get ready, probably read my book until we go down to the beach and update you then. We've been on and off again and again. I don't know which way we're going, no control. You push me, then you pull me back in. Don't know if I can decipher how your mind works. Yeah, you leave me wondering what it's like to feel your skin. I will keep on trying till You give me a sign Give me a sign Ah, oh, give me a sign Baby, give me a sign Just give me one more You leave me hanging, begging for more Think that I'm addicted to this Can't resist to be a little risky and go for it cause I want you close I'm so exposed when you're keeping me wondering You know I'd do anything to be in your arms again So give me a sign Give me a sign Oh, give me a sign Baby, give me a sign Just give me one more Talking to you talking to here we go again Staying up all night to see if you've been texting me Where do we go from here? I wanna go all in So give me a sign I just wanna let you know I could go for this No more tricks We could take things slow Say you think about it too When the lights go out and there's no doubt That I should be with That I should be We've been on and off again and again I don't know which way we're going No control you Push me then you pull me back in Morning guys, welcome to day four of the beach vlogs Um Yesterday, I did not really film that much. Yesterday, I did not really film that much, so I do apologize, which is why I knew if I was going to do, like, not really daily vlogging, but, like, I knew I needed more than just one day to put in a video, so I do apologize for that. Yesterday was just a very chill day. Honestly, I stayed at the beach all day, but under our tent because I... I don't want to say I'm sunburned. It's just I had certain areas that I really wanted to keep out of the sun. And that's what I did. It was super nice, super relaxing. I completely finished a book while I was there, which I'm so proud of. And I rated pretty high. After that, we came up and me and my husband cooked dinner for everyone. I was going to bring my camera out for that, but by the time we started cooking, I left my camera here in the bedroom. We did a taco night, so we had the options of doing like 
tacos, burritos, a taco salad, like basically do whatever you kind of want. And so that's what we did. And I think it turned out really, really good. Um, and then we just kind of chilled by, we just kind of chilled in the living room. We were going to play games, but like the guys wanted to watch the baseball game so bad. Uh, so let's get into the books. So I completely finished Every Summer After by Carly Fortin. And let me just tell you, I loved this book. It was very emotional. It took a little while for me to get into it. I'd say the first 50 pages, I was just like, what? <laughs> But I really love this book. I gave this one four and a half stars. Um, if you liked Love in Other Words, I think you would really, really enjoy this one. Um, I did like Love in Other Words just a little bit more. I felt like it was a little bit more emotional. This one is about a woman named Persephone. And basically, she gets a phone call from a guy named Charlie, who was a friend of hers when she was a teenager. Her parents had a lake house that she went to every summer. And Charlie and Sam were the boys that lived next door around her age. And she basically tells you that she had a relationship with Sam, who was the same age as her and the younger brother. And something happened way back then to where she basically ruined everything and her whole life's been messed up since then. And she's regretted everything that she's done and blah, 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 blah. But basically, Charlie is calling her because his mother, Sue, died and she was very close to their mother. And so she's going back to, you know, attend the funeral. But so then you get flashback chapters of when she was 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and maybe 18. But basically you see Percy and Sam's friendship bubble up to a friendship and it's such, I don't know, I felt like it was a very natural romance. Like this one just seems like a very natural romance because they became friends and then they became, you know, more than friends. And I think that's why I like friends to lovers tropes because it seems very natural that this would happen. So I don't know. I just really, really loved it. The reason why this was not a five star read for me is because the whole time you're knowing that Percy did something when her and Sam broke up and the whole time you're like what in the world happened to break these two apart and when it's finally revealed and I kind of saw it coming and I was really hoping I was wrong but I wasn't and I did I knew it was coming but I think why it happened was just a no for me so but overall I really enjoyed it I loved the lake summer vibes like if you want a good summery romance with you know lake vibes this is your book I absolutely loved the vibes in this one so I would definitely pick it up if you're interested or if you loved love in other words four and a half stars then last night I was going to read your invited but I read the first like 30 40 pages and honestly I just wasn't that interested in it so I'm doing like a soft DNF on this one the first chapter was really good um or the prologue maybe it was a prologue it doesn't say a chapter it just says Amaya but basically Amaya like woke up in her hotel room and she's like feeling like victorious because like she knows she did something and it's the day of the wedding and she's like the wedding's not gonna happen she's gone blah 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 and then like the hotel staff are like wanting to search her room because the bride is missing she's like I know the bride's missing but obviously I can't say anything so she's kind of freaking out so yeah so the first like chapter was really good but then after that it's like three months before the wedding and I felt like there was just kind of a lot thrown at me at once and like there was a lot of names and I was just like wait who is who and they're not like very common names which is not a big deal it's just when you're trying to keep up with who's who it's a little hard so I did a soft DNF on this one and then last night I went ahead and picked up I'm Missing by Mina, Minka Kent, which I know I picked this one earlier, or Justin picked this one, but I decided to not do this one um, because I couldn't find an audiobook. Well, 
I ended up canceling my Kindle Unlimited subscription and it ends on the 13th, but this one's actually on Kindle Unlimited, so I can actually read and listen to the book at the same time. So I did read the first four chapters, not very far, first like 30 pages, not anything crazy. Um, this one is just okay so far. Again, only first four chapters. This one starts with Merit, or actually, excuse me, it starts with Lydia, like in the prologue, she's basically getting kidnapped while she's on a hike, and she mentions that she just got married like three months ago um, to Luca, who is the husband, and someone approaches her and like basically takes her and blah, 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 and now in chapter one, uh, we have Merritt who is opening the door and there's a woman in front of her claiming to be Lydia and she, Lydia's looking for Luca and Merritt's like, uh, Merritt is the new wife to Luca and I think Lydia's been missing and presumed dead for 10 years and Merritt's been like, you know, you have the wrong house, this is not a nice joke, the person you're asking for has been dead for 10 years, blah, 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 and like basically shut her out. Then we get perspectives from Lydia's chapters of her trying to figure out like what her next move is. And basically she is trying to get a job at this place, but like trying to get paid like under the table. And that chapter wasn't that interesting. And then we get back to Merritt and basically we find out that Merritt is pregnant and about to give birth, I think like any day now. And she does have a firstborn daughter and Luca's not in town he's trying to sell his company i think so i'm not sure if they're having like money issues or something but i think he's away from town trying to like sell off his business type of thing so yeah but yeah not too many thoughts on this one but hopefully i'll have a little bit more this is like a super short book i think it's under 300 pages yeah it's under 250 to be honest so i could definitely get this one done pretty quickly and I think once I finish this one, I think I'm going to start One Tree of Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I'm going to go upstairs and get some breakfast. Hello, Ramona. I can't shake the simplest feeling. Beyond the ghost, we stand on the opposite shore. Hello, Ramona. I reach through mysterious ceilings, my only hope. I look for the things I don't know. Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know We're all in this, I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know so full let me center you a little bit um but yeah i just had dinner we had hamburgers and hot dogs and some mac and cheese delicious i love hamburgers and mac and cheese today was kind of an interesting day we had a kind of like a cornhole tournament and yours truly <laughs> me and justin stomped the competition i think we won four games back to back so 
pretty good and I'm not usually good at cornhole especially with the wind and stuff like it was crazy while I was down there I did read The Unmissing by Mina Kent and I am unfortunately giving this a one star I did not enjoy anything about this book for one the writing was like very simple like almost a little too simple I just didn't like the writing style or anything about it when I say simple like it's kind of hard to like describe why you don't like a writing style because it's too simple but it was just like very bland almost it just wasn't it i love me a good kidnapping story but this one was just not it at all i felt like the characters were not developed very well i, I don't even know like if that makes any sense but this one was just not very good and honestly i don't know if i'll ever pick up anything else by this author just because of the writing style i you know it's a very short read, so I will give it that. It was very bingeable. I think I got this done in like three hours, honestly, with the audiobook on like almost three times the speed. But it was just not good at all. I was not surprised by any of the plot twists. This one was just not good in my opinion. I don't recommend it honestly. But tonight I will be moving on to One True Love by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I feel like I should know what this is about but I don't know. I feel like this was a very summery beach read. It says in her 20s Emma Blair marries high school sweetheart Jesse. We love a good name. Emma as a freelance writer, Jesse as a production assistant on nature documentaries, living life to the fullest and seizing every opportunity of adventure. On their first wedding anniversary Jesse is on an assignment when his helicopter goes missing over the Pacific. Just like that Jesse's gone forever. Emma quits her job and moves home in an effort to put her life together. Years later, now in her 30s, Emma runs into an old friend, Sam, and finds herself falling in love again. When Emma and Sam get engaged, it feels like Emma's second chance at happiness. That is, until Jesse is found. He's alive and he's been trying to come home to her all these years. Emma knows she has to listen to her heart. She's just not sure what it's saying. So love triangle much i feel like this would be a perfect beach read i'm really excited to read this one i just have to download it on audiobook because scribd and kindle limited are not an option so i guess i will actually have to purchase this one so but yeah i think we're going to eat some ice cream because i heard there's an ice cream truck that's been coming around here and then i think we're going to go back out on the beach and fly our kites and take some pictures and things like that mm -hmm. 